In this video, I'll be calculating the metric, the Riemannian metric for spherical coordinates. Now, if you don't know basic Riemannian geometry, none of this will make sense. But if you're familiar with the area, you'll be fine with this. Okay, so say we have a function f that takes you, this is going to be the hyperspherical coordinates parameterization. Okay, so it takes you from r plus, okay, r cross, all the positive real numbers. This is going to be your radius. Cross the interval from 0 to 2 pi. This is going to be our theta. Cross and then 0 to pi to the n minus 2. And we'll take that into r into r to the n, removing the center. Okay, so for example, in spherical coordinates, right, you'd have your radius, you'd have the uh, radius, right, an angle theta there, or phi, depends on who you ask, and then from the top down, you'll have phi, okay? Is that, to be totally disambiguous, I'll call this one phi 1 and this one phi 2. Okay? That's what we're going to be doing here. Okay? Okay, and what we're going to do is we'll define this as sending the r phi 1 up until a phi n minus 1. I'll, call, I'll do this rn plus 1. And then r minus one there. Okay, just so this the this is easier. So we're gonna do that, and we're gonna say that is going to be equal to the pair, the n tuple r cosine of phi one, and then r uh, sine of phi one, cosine phi two, and then you can imagine doing this for general ones. It's gonna be r sine of phi 1 up until sine of phi i, and then cosine of phi i plus 1. Okay, that's going to be the i plus 1 coordinate until we get up until r sine of phi 1 up until sine of phi n. Okay, so that's going to be something in r n plus 1, and it can't be 0 because there'd be infinitely, this wouldn't be bijective then, okay? Okay, so now... We have this representation. Now let's calculate the pullback metric. So we'll pull back the metric, okay? And what? How do we define this pullback metric? Well, what we do is we say, along f, the pullback metric, the a b coordinates. Okay, so this is a tensor field. We're doing the contravariant components or covariant. I'm pretty sure it's covariant. Okay because it takes in two vector fields, that will be g i j, okay, the metric here, times the partial derivative of f, ith component, in respect to the uh, chart map u a, where that a goes there, Einstein summation convention, times partial derivative in respect to j, del u b. Partial derivative of fj in respect to ub, b there, j summation right there. Okay, now the flat metric says that i has to be equal to j. So this is really just the sum over i of del phi i over del ua times del phi i over del ub. Because Einstein summation convention, we don't have that liberty here because the indices are both on the top. Okay, so we made it so that i is equal to j in all of them. Okay, so let's calculate this for a couple specific cases. So let's do it for when a is equal to b. Okay, so f star g a a. Okay, what is this gonna be equal to? Well, let's calculate it out. It's going to be derivative of this one in respect... Let's calculate 1, 1, okay? 
one one. Let's calculate that. Okay, that's gonna be derive it in respect to r each time, and you can see how this is gonna go. So you're gonna get derive in respect to r. R goes away in every single one, so we're just left with cosine squared phi one plus sine because we're squaring it have to multiply it by itself sine squared phi one cosine squared phi two plus and then we're gonna have um you can imagine continuing that all the way up until sine squared phi one all the way up until sine squared phi n we just got rid of that r now from there what can we calculate well, sine squared of phi 1 is in all of them except for cosine squared of phi 1. So we're going to have cosine squared of phi 1 plus sine squared of phi 1. And we're going to multiply sine squared of phi 1 by something. Okay, now that something is going to be cosine squared of phi 2 except... That's the exception, because from then on, it's going to be sine squared of phi 2. Okay, and so we're going to multiply that by something. You can imagine continuing that all the way down until we got cosine squared of phi n plus sine squared of phi n. Right? Okay, so... Cosine squared of phi n plus sine squared of phi n, that's 1. Oh, but then there we'd have cosine squared of phi n minus 1 plus sine squared of phi n minus 1, because if you remember right there, we're just multiplying it. That travels down a series of 1s until we were left with cosine squared of phi 1 plus sine squared of phi 1. That's just 1. Okay. Good to know. Now let's calculate f star g a a. Okay, for a bigger than 1. Okay, so it's going to be very similar, except we're just going to start off with r squared, sine squared of phi 1, up until sine squared of phi a minus 1. Okay? We're going to go up until phi a minus 1. And then that's going to carry through, through all of these. Now the first one, what are we going to have? Right there would be phi a, so that'd be sine negative sine of phi a. That's we square it, so it would be sine squared of phi a is the exception here. And then everywhere else, it's gonna be cosine squared of phi a. Okay. Then because we're not deriving it in respect to a for everything else, right? We're just gonna have for everything else cosine squared first plus sine squared second. And then that sine squared carries through all the way up until we get cosine squared phi n plus sine squared phi n. Right? Uh, there's another one. And then we have that trail of ones, except we're left with this out front. So we're left with r squared sine squared phi 1 all the way up until sine squared phi a minus 1. Okay, now let's assume a is not equal to b. Then we're going to be left with f star g a b. Now, if you don't believe me on this, I'll uh, you can do this for spherical coordinates, and you'll see all this factoring method going out, okay, eventually. Okay, so f star g a b. Now, if a is not equal to b, Let's assume that B is greater than A. Okay? If B is greater than A, we're going to reach A first. Right? So I'm just going to write this out. So until we reach B, this right here is going to be 0. So until we reach that point, we're going to have R squared, sine squared, phi 1, all the way up until not... Uh, sine. We're going to have a negative r sine of phi 1 all the way up until sine of phi b, right? Because cos a derivative of cosine gives you negative sine, and here we don't have the square to cancel out. 
And then the other one is deriving it in respect to A. So that's just going to be R sine of phi 1 all the way up until somewhere in there we're going to have cosine of phi A and then up until cosine of phi B. Right? And then plus we're going to have R sine of phi 1 all the way up until sine of phi B. Right? And we're going to multiply the... Uh, and then multiply that by cosine phi b plus 1. And we're multiplying that by r sine phi 1 all the way up until sine of phi. Somewhere in there we're going to have a cosine of phi a. Oh, sorry, we were deriving this, so that would be a cosine there. Okay, so it's cosine of phi b because derivative of sine gives you cosine. And then up here we're going to have sine phi b then cosine phi b plus 1. And then we can continue that. But I'm going to use a very similar factoring trick. We're actually going to have out front r squared sine squared phi 1 all the way up until sine squared phi um, b minus 1 all the way up until sine squared phi a yeah, b minus 1, except we're skipping a here, so we're skipping a. So I'll denote that a hat, so we're skipping a. And then out front, we're going to have, what are we going to have? Sine of phi b, cosine of phi b, cosine of phi a, sine of phi a. And you can check this on every single one, that's going to be the case. Cosine of phi b, sine of phi b, cosine of phi a, sine of phi a. So out front, we're going to have... Cosine phi a sine phi a cosine phi b sine phi b. Okay? So that's what we're going to have out front. For the first one, it's going to be precisely that with a negative out front. So a negative 1. And then plus, the next one is going to be that, but with cosine squared of phi b plus 1. Then from then on, it's going to be sine squared of phi b plus 1. And then we're going to multiply that by so on. You know, that same exact pattern. So this goes to 1, right, by that same idea. That goes to 1. We have a negative 1 out front. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0, 0. So it vanishes everywhere except on the diagonal. Do these calculations out yourself, okay? This is the idea that I've come up with, at least. So, in spherical coordinates, hyperspherical coordinates, whatever you want to call it, our metric is a... Uh, our metric is given by... Well, let me get a new marker. Okay, our metric is given by G I J, or I'll just say G is going to be equal to a matrix. Okay, G is going to be the matrix that has one right there, as we calculated. Zero, zero, down until zero. And then we're going to have 0, what was it going to be? It's going to be r squared, right? r squared, then sine squared phi 1 minus 1, it doesn't really make sense, right? So we're just going to be left with r squared there, 0 all the way down. 0, 0, r squared, sine squared phi 1 all the way down until 0, right? Continue it down on that diagonal. Continue it across here. Until at the bottom, we're going to be left with r squared, sine squared, phi 1, all the way up until sine squared, phi n minus 1, right? Over here, we're going to have zeros all the way down. Right? Close off that matrix. 
Next video, we're going to be calculating the Christoffel symbols of this <laughs> using the levi Shvita connection. And it, oh my lord, can you imagine? I can't, I, oh.